Let's get started with Software Foundations, Volume 1, Logical Foundations, the Basics Chapter. Basics, Functional Programming in Coq. Right away, let me pause to say you might want to follow along with this lecture. Now, if you just want to learn a little bit about Coq, be able to have conversations with it, know something about it, no problem. You can just watch the video. But for the next level of depth in studying this, you'll want to have the same file of lecture notes that I'm using right here and follow along with it, perhaps pausing from time to time to try things out yourself. I've put these notes into the repo of lecture notes and textbook chapters published online at GitHub. So if I pull up my browser here, you will see at github.com, I have a lecture here, uh, repo here for Software Foundations lectures. Uh, and there's a directory for notes and a directory for textbook chapters. What I'm looking at right now is in the notes directory, and we're looking at the basics chapter, basics.v. Cock files end with .v. V there stands for vernacular. We'll get into that in just a minute. So you could grab these notes, perhaps clone the repo, download it yourself, however you want to follow along. Now, as you follow along, you're going to want to do that in some kind of interface. So let me also pause right now to talk about the different interfaces you might want to use for Coq as you're following along and getting to know Coq. The first and simplest is to just do it in your browser. At coq.vercel.app, there's a Coq scratch pad where the entire thing easily runs directly in your browser. Let me give you a very brief demo of this interface, the Coq scratch pad. So we've got up and down arrows over here. Those are used to compile to a particular point in this buffer of code. Now, this is a little different than many other programming environments, most of which you maybe compile things after you finish writing a file and maybe that produces some object code. That's possible in Coq too. But mostly uh, when we're developing with Coq, we do it in a kind of interactive way. So uh, we could compile this buffer up to a particular point where that period is by pressing the down arrow here. So down also has a keyboard shortcut that will differ depending on what your system is. Uh, on mine, I can use option down arrow on my Mac. And you'll notice that this first line is now highlighted, that has become compiled. And we got a response back down here at the very bottom. Uh, the response is that true has type bool. And that's because we asked Cock here to check what the type of true is. Check here is a vernacular command. You will recognize those as usually starting with capital letters. So the vernacular is how we interact with Coq to ask it to do things, change the environment, and so forth. Uh, I could also check perhaps the type of false if I wanted. Now notice this has not been compiled yet, but if I hit down, that down gets compiled. Uh, we get the response that false has type bool. It's a Boolean as well. And then if I want to go back to a previous point in my development here, I could hit up. Uh, that now leaves me in between these two. One of them is compiled, the other is not. Uh, and you can jump around in a buffer like that. If you want to go to a particular place in the buffer, there is a compile to the point where the cursor is. So if I put, uh, let's maybe uncompile everything. I put my cursor here at the end, do the compile to cursor, which I could also do apparently with option return, and it will compile all of those at the same time. Okay, and then if you ever needed to do things like interrupt the cock process uh, because maybe you sent it off to do something that was taking it too long, there's something for that as well. Okay, so that's how to use uh, the cock interface interactively in the scratch pad. The same concepts apply to other integrated development environments for cock. One of the main ones of those is the Coq platform, uh, which you can download from the Coq website. It is perhaps the simplest way to get Coq installed on your own machine rather than run it in a browser. I've already installed it here. Uh, you can see that it has basically the same kinds of concepts going on as our scratch pad did. Let's close that right now. Now our we have a buffer here. We could. Uh, Right, the same kinds of code in it. And we have similar kinds of navigation. Forward one command, backward, compile to the cursor. This also has a uh, restart cock, uh, go all the way to the end of the file, uh, and uh, interrupt the cock process if it's taking too long. So I could have check true, I could have check false. Uh, right now, you're just getting a little highlight on each line to show which line I'm actually on. Maybe I'll add a third line here to make that a little clearer. Okay, 
but I could compile to compile forward one command here that takes me past that period, highlights it now, gives me the same response as before. True has type bool. I could go down one more command. False has type bool. I could go down another. True has type bool. You see what's going on. Uh, I can go up. I can go all the way up to the top of the file. I can go all the way down to the end. So we have the same kinds of interactions as with the Scratchpad. So that's Cock IDE, uh, the one shipped by the Cock team itself. Uh, a very easy way, especially on Windows, to get started and if you don't want to have to install a whole Linux development environment. Another step from there could be running it in Emacs. This is actually how I usually interact with Cock. Uh, so I, I have Emacs installed here. I have uh, a Linux development environment installed underneath the hood here, uh, running on top of OPAM, the OCaml package manager uh, through which I've installed Cock. You can find instructions for this online how to do as well. Uh, this is maybe a little more advanced, uh, but if you're used to Emacs, it is maybe one of the more enjoyable interfaces that you could have. Uh, if you're not used to Emacs, hey, maybe this is a time to learn Emacs, one of these venerable, powerful editors. Finally, another way to interact with all of this would be with Visual Studio Code. So I also have that installed on my machine. Let's load up Visual Studio Code here. Uh, now, it's important in the long run to get used to opening Visual Studio Code inside a directory. Uh, so there's a file called underscore cock project that is used in big cock developments or even moderately small ones. Uh, and you need to have the directory open in Visual Studio Code as opposed to just a single file uh, in order for Visual Studio Code to understand how to correctly compile multi-file cock projects. Okay, but here we have basics and oh, I already had it open. And you'll notice here that we can do the same kinds of interactions. Now we don't have little uh, up and down arrows here, but the Visual Studio palette, uh, view command palette, uh, if you type in cock colon after having installed cock underneath the hood and also having installed uh, an extension for cock, uh, you will have commands that do things like uh, step forward and backward. So those are the same forward and backward ideas that we've seen in the other IDEs. And there are keyboard shortcuts for those as well. So I can step forward here, and that's good. in this case compiled all the way down to that period here. So you get the idea. Uh, we have various kinds of IDEs. Each of them has the notion of interactive compilation, and each of them has its own set of controls for stepping forward or backward.